What's up guys? Chris Irvin, the ketologist coming at you from Austin, Texas. This video is about insulin resistance because I think that insulin resistance is one of the most important predictors of our overall health status. And it's also one of the biggest reasons why a lot of you guys are following a ketogenic or a low carb diet, even if you don't know it yet. So the purpose of this video is going to be to explain what insulin resistance is, how it occurs, what the health implications of insulin resistance are, and what it kind of means for your diet and how the ketogenic diet or low carb dieting can help combat this. So let's just dive right into it. So a lot of you guys have probably heard uh, about people talking about insulin resistance in the health space, but you may not know what it really means. So this is gonna be a very basic definition that's not gonna be too technical, just to kind of help paint a picture of what people are talking about when they refer to insulin resistance. So let's start with the hormone insulin. So insulin is a hormone that is secreted by our pancreas in responses to increases in our blood sugar. So how this works is that when we consume carbohydrates, carbohydrates are broken down into glucose or blood sugar, and that causes you know an increase in our blood sugar, which makes our pancreas secrete insulin. And what insulin does is insulin travels around the body, and it essentially binds to our cells, and it kind of activates this cascade of events that allows our cells to open up and have glucose come in to be used for energy to help the cells carry out their normal functions. Now this is a good process. This is something that we need to occur. This is how our cells can get energy from carbohydrates. But the problem with this is, is that when we are chronically stimulating this process, uh, this communication between insulin and our cells can become damaged and not work as well. So how does this happen? Well, as you could probably guess it, chronically consuming carbohydrates and over consuming carbohydrates is how that can occur. So if we are frequently stimulating increases in blood sugar, what happens is, is that insulin no longer communicates very well with our cells. So we have an increase in blood sugar from consuming carbohydrates, our pancreas secretes insulin, insulin goes to our cells, it tries to communicate with the cells to open up and let glucose come in, but our cells just aren't really listening anymore because they're resistant to the action of insulin. So that means that our pancreas has to secrete more insulin because we are, we're still trying to deal with this increase in blood sugar. So what happens is, is that we have elevated blood sugar for a longer period of time, we have elevated insulin levels, and then you know we have another carbohydrate meal and we just further keep on stimulating this process and it can just spiral out of control. And this is essentially what insulin resistance is. So as kind of a basic understanding of it, insulin resistance is our body is no longer responding to the actions of insulin very well. And what does this kind of mean for our health? Well, it means a lot of things. So as you guys have probably heard about like type two diabetes, one of the biggest health epidemics that we're faced with today, Di type two diabetes comes from insulin resistance. It comes from chronic insulin resistance that over time leads to type two diabetes. But you know, we know that type two diabetes is a problem and you know, there's a lot of research out there showing how like low carb and ketogenic dieting can help combat this. And we'll kind of get into why that is in a second here, but it's not just diabetes that insulin resistance can cause. Actually, if you look at a lot of the most chronic diseases that we're faced with today, a lot of them are rooted in insulin resistance and inflammation. And these two t typically go hand in hand. So when we are insulin resistant, we're also increasing our risk for like obesity. And obviously obesity is something that is going to be uh, very detrimental to our health and cause a lot of different health problems. But there's also a big link uh, from insulin resistance for like cardiovascular disease and even neurodegenerative diseases. And in fact, neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's are actually being referred to now as type three diabetes. And the reason why this is, is because uh, Alzheimer's is kind of rooted in insulin resistance occurring in the brain. So just like we talked about what insulin resistance is, the same thing is happening in the brain. And what happens in this case is that because our brain has such this massive energy requirement and we're not able to effectively get energy into the brain from glucose anymore because of the insulin resistance, now the brain starts to not have, it has an energy deficit, which can kind of start spiraling the health of the brain out of control. And that's how you can kind of be on a progression towards neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's. So that's kind of the biggest reason why we need to take this very seriously is because insulin resistance is, is why a lot of us are suffering from all these different conditions. It plays a big role in things like PCOS. Uh, it's just, it's something that we are, a lot of us are dealing with today, even if we don't know it. Uh, but the good news about this is, is that we can do something about it because as I kind of just walked you step by step through how insulin resistance occurs, you kind of notice that it occurs from our lifestyle and our diet, which means that we can reverse it through the same mechanisms. We just have to make some improvements in it. So 
when people kind of talk about like ketogenic dieting and low carb dieting, we end up kind of falling into this thing where we start assuming that carbohydrates are bad. And I kind of want to touch on that for a second because I think it really pertains to this topic. So when we're talking about carbohydrates being bad, that's not necessarily the case. Carbohydrates are not bad for us. Now, are processed carbohydrates bad for us? Yes, probably. But, you know, whole food carbohydrates that are not processed, are they necessarily bad for us? No. But if you are insulin resistant, then they are. Because if you are insulin resistant, your body no longer effectively metabolizes carbohydrates anymore. Your body cannot use that as an energy source anymore. So in that case, carbohydrates are bad for you. So, you know, if you are suffering from insulin resistance or you, you know, if you're pre-diabetic or you, or, you know, maybe it's not even that you have a condition yet. Maybe it's that you're wanting to combat these conditions. Well, the answer to that is keeping your carbohydrate intake lower and trying to not chronically be overeating carbohydrates because that's just going to lead to this problem. So, you know, that's kind of what that means for your diet. That means that if you're suffering from this condition and, you know, some telltale signs of insulin resistance can be after you consume carbohydrates, if you're feeling really groggy and fatigued, if you're feeling bloated afterwards, um, if you have a lot of inflammation going on in your body, and if you're you know suffering from any of these conditions that we talked about, like your blood lipids are kind of out of whack and suggesting that you may have some uh, impairments in your cardiovascular health, or you know you have like really high levels of CRP, um, if you have really high fasting blood glucose levels or your fasting insulin levels are elevated, those are kind of all signs that you can be suffering from insulin resistance. But the good news is, like I said, is that there's something you can do about it. And this is kind of where low carb and ketogenic dieting come into play. So it makes sense that if your body is suffering from insulin resistance, that we should try to find a different fuel source. And for a lot of you guys that are familiar with the ketogenic diet, you can probably see where I'm going with this. So we need to try to find a different fuel source that our cells can use because we no longer effectively use these uh, carbohydrates. We don't use this blood sugar very well anymore. And a ketogenic diet comes into play because when we stop eating carbohydrates, our blood sugar lowers and that makes our pancreas secrete no, less insulin and it actually secretes a different hormone known as glucagon. And what glucagon can do is glucagon can help activate um, our stored fat and help mobilize it so that it can one, be used for energy, but also travel to our liver where it can be broken down and converted to ketones. And ketones are this alternative fuel source that can be very beneficial when you're suffering from insulin resistance because research has shown that even insulin resistant cells, while they can't use glucose very well, they can still use ketones. So this is one of the biggest reasons why we're seeing the ketogenic diet being used for so many different things. And it's, it's a little bit of a hard topic to talk about because when you start talking about, you know, hey, there's a study out there that says keto is beneficial for Alzheimer's, it's beneficial for cancer, it's beneficial for, um, you know, diabetes and cardiovascular disease and PCOS and all these different things. People start thinking that you're, you know, you're selling snake oil, that you have like this, you know, miracle diet that can cure everything. When really that's not necessarily the case, but what's going on here is that because all of those conditions are rooted in insulin resistance and the ketogenic diet can combat insulin resistance and inflammation, which as I said earlier is also a common contributor to a lot of these chronic diseases, that's the reason why the ketogenic diet is showing benefit in a lot of those areas. Now, that doesn't mean that we have the ketogenic diet uh, you know, fully figured out. That doesn't mean that it is the end all be all for health. But what it does mean is that if you are suffering from insulin resistance, if you have been chronically consuming carbohydrates for a long period of time, and you are noticing the damage that it's having on your health, the ketogenic diet can be a great thing to come in and help combat this. So that's kind of a basic breakdown of insulin resistance, guys. Now, I will admit that this is a very complex topic and the way that I spoke about it in this video is a lot less complex than it actually is. But the purpose of videos like this is to kind of let you guys know what's going on in your body so that you understand why you're doing what you're doing with your diet. I think a lot of us can benefit from knowing what's going on when you're consuming a lot of carbohydrates, especially processed carbohydrates. And then there's a lot of benefit to knowing what happens when you stop doing that and you start going more towards a low carb ketogenic diet because this kind of helps with the adherence of it. You know, if you know what's going on inside your body during this time, then you're more likely to adhere to the diet because you understand how beneficial it is for you to do this. So that's it for this video, guys. If you found this video beneficial and you would think that you have some friends that, or family that could really benefit from this, you know, for me, I talk about this topic a lot with family members who are, you know, aging a little bit and maybe starting to deal with some like dementia and Alzheimer's. 
Um, I also think, you know, if you have anybody who is suffering from things like PCOS or, you know, or even like I said earlier, not necessarily about trying to combat these conditions, but what about just trying to reduce our risk of them? Um, share this video with them because I think that it can be beneficial for them understanding what's going on in the body and maybe help give them a reason and a why to not eat the way that they are and start, you know, improving their health through diet and lifestyle changes. So that's it for this video, guys. If you have any questions, please comment them below. And uh, thanks for watching.